You know what time it is. Welcome to Great Table Talk. Childhood friends coming together to make a difference in our everyday community. Enjoy this week's episode. Welcome to Great Table Talk. It's your girl Cash. How you doing, fellas? Doing great. We have a special guest today, Mr. Brian Lumor. How are you doing? Doing better than most. That's better all right, most, all know? right. You heard that? Yeah. Mr. Brian Lumar is the principal of Hornville High School, which is my alma mater. Thank you very much. And um, good for you. I'm just saying. <laughs> he had the opportunity to go. Uh, Mr. Lumar, in case you don't know, this is you know my first cousin, our dad of brothers. Okay. And he had the opportunity to go to Hornville, but he just chose not to. But we're not going to. We, we discuss this man, every Thanksgiving. An H on his chest. You know what I wear on mine? An A. First Started, letter. Oh, he tried it. Oh, okay, we're going to talk about that, that later. Airline. I went to oh, Airline okay, High. Okay, okay. Shout out to Airline High. Oh, no shout out to Airline High. Hornville High is the place to be, which is where we are filming this podcast today. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, an, it's a great school. It's been a long time since I've been inside of here. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, we've been up on Airline a lot. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know we're 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 an academic. Um, that oh, he's academics tried as well. it. <laughs> That's a great comeback. I love that. I love that. I know you are such a busy man, and I do appreciate you allowing us to come interview you. Absolutely. Um, I just want to say for the record, uh, you have. I, I've talked to quite a few students, so I've done my research before mm-hmm. I got with you uh, today. Uh, quite a few students love Mr. Brian Lumo. I tell you, they. They're acting like y'all went to school together, shot models. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great thing to have an impact like you do. Good, I appreciate that. Yep, so here's the thing. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Mr. Brian Lumar? Well, bro, believe it or not, I tell the kids this all the time. I grew up in uh, a little small town, West Wego. Okay. You know, the, city, the city that knows how. Um, in a pretty bad area. You know, mm-hmm. I have to take them back there sometimes because, you know, they sometimes believe that, you know, it's always been kind of like a white picket fence, no issues. Mm-hmm. And, but some of the same issues that these kids are going through, I, you know, I went through myself, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a two-parent home, you know, uh, they had enough to make ends get close. They never met, you know, but they worked extremely hard to afford us the opportunity um, you know, to get a quality education. Uh, my parents were very strict. Even though I was a guy, I was sort of treated like a girl, you know, had to be home by midnight for my senior prom. And, you know, I, <laughs> I tell people things like that, and, and, yeah. and they don't believe me. I was a public school kid all my life. Um, but my ninth grade year, my freshman year, I had an opportunity to go to Archbishop Shaw, okay. which was a Catholic school, uh, because I was interested in music. And, um, you know, my home school, they really didn't focus too much on the a, on a, on a music program. So I went to, to Shaw, believe it or not, I was in a band. Mm-hmm. And then I grew six inches in the summertime and everybody started saying, man, you should play basketball. Uh-huh. You know how that is, tall guy, <laughs> you know, uh, and they thought I should play basketball. So, but I, I really went to the school for music. I heard it was a good school from an academic standpoint, but I just thought if you applied yourself, it didn't matter where you went to school. Good. You know, so um, I played basketball and I was in a band and like I said, I grew six inches and, you know, my freshman year, I wound up making a varsity team having mm-hmm. never played basketball a day in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, you know, it all took off from there. You know, I, I was I was in a band, and then I was excelling at basketball, and I, it turned out my senior year, I was able to receive a number of scholarship offers from an academic standpoint as well as oh, a, awesome. a, athletic, you yeah. know. But my, my passion still was music. So I put all that in a pot, and even though I had all these scholarships, I decided to attend Loyola University because they were starting a, a, a basketball program. Mm-hmm. Um, they called it a tradition reborn. It was in its second year of reinventing that particular program. And then it was a great institution for, for music, you know, for my musical background, and as well as a, a great academic right. institution. So I was able to, to kill three with one stone. You know, and I jumbled all that up in a pot and was able to go there and, you know, once again, just continue to get better in basketball. Yeah. 
And then my dean of the music school gave me an ultimatum, like, you got to decide. You're missing all these performances. Uh, what are you going to yeah, do? Right. Well, at that particular time, it was easy for me. I was going to go play basketball. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then I just minored in music. I was still able to play basketball. You know, and I, once again, I was able to fulfill all those you had a plan. And, oh, I, I definitely had a plan in place. So it was good. Under no circumstances did I ever think I would be, you know, in the school system, mm -hmm. uh, a teacher, a coach. Or, mm -hmm. You know, I just thought I was going to go play basketball at the next level. But if that didn't work out, I still did what I was supposed to do in the classroom to kind of establish that solid foundation so I can always have that to fall back on. Okay, now I do things a little unorthodox, so I want to ask a question, but I, I'm going to come back to what we just discussed about your upbringing. Okay. When you became principal of Hornville High, mm -hmm. was there any pressure that you put on yourself or from the outside world that you felt like you were pressured when you accepted this position? You know, this is a, it's, it's almost like I was talking to a few people, and, and they say the same thing. It's almost like you run in the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hornville's right. principal in Destrahan. I mm -hmm. mean, it's really more so on the West Bank. I mean, this is a, I mean, it's a community. That's it's a true really statement, a tight right? Knit community. I find a lot of people on the other side of the river have migrated there, but here you got your homegrown, right. your mama, mamas, mamas. So it's a, it's a tight knit community. So people look at you. You know, when I became principal, it's like you have a green head all of a right. sudden. Right, <laughs> right. And a, a strength for me, I, I, I don't really stress out about anything because you can only control what you can control. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's one of my biggest strengths. It, it wasn't any pressure at all because I felt that all I needed to do was to continue to do what I've been doing, you right. know, on a day-to-day -day basis, which is just try to enrich the lives of young children. And that's it for me. Um, the day that that's not the number one focus for me would be the, the day I get out of this. Right. You know, that so makes, it was very easy for sense. me. No pressure whatsoever. I think that's like the best mindset. And even to what he led into when he was talking about himself, I think for me, I always say the most important thing a person can do is share their story. And by this being such a close knit, you know, I, I guess area, I mean, people are going to treat him like family. Right. So knowing the story and knowing where he comes from and, and having respect for that and, and being able to see like this person is just like me. They had the same opportunities, you know, that I'm going to have, you know, going through life. Right. It's a great thing for kids to that, see. That's a plus. You're right. Yeah, that's a plus. plus. Pause for a second. Can you all hear me in, a, in your headphones? Yeah, okay, good. Okay. So make sure I, I turn the volume no, up later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And see. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got to ask. Um, okay. Back to what you were saying earlier. You were, uh, you played basketball. What would be one of the things that your students would be surprised to know about Mr. Brian Lumar? They're extremely surprised about the music side of it. I mean, I did that for 17 years. So when I whip out my trumpet and play with the band, oh. and I'm really in the mix with the students here at the school. I try to do a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, because not one particular sport or club, extra extracurricular, co-curricular activity is more important than the other. That's correct. You right. know, so I, I try to, you know, I try to get around as much as I can to just to show the students I'm, you know, not far removed from doing the exact same thing you're doing today. You got to stay up with the times, mm -hmm. you know, uh, otherwise it'll pass you by. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing when I, I pick up the trumpet and start playing and they like, is that you? Like, you know, so, and they don't I would know. be tripped out if my principal picked up any instrument. I'm like, hold up now. I'm saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm good. At, I'm, I'm really, really, you know, feeling feeling good about that because I think diversity is something that's missing yes. in our communities. Like, right. we, we, we get pigeonholed into thinking that we're that's supposed correct. to do just one thing. Mm -hmm. That's know? correct. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, I always share the story with them because when I walked into Shaw High School my first day, I'll never forget, you know, you're talking about a school that was probably 95% white, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I walked in and, you know, the first few blacks that I had the opportunity to run into to have an encounter with, they were ripping me to shreds because here you had this 6'3", you know, tall, bald, black guy right. holding a, a horn in his hand. <laughs> right. You know, and they let me have it. 
you know, <laughs> and like I say, if I wasn't strong at that point, I would have folded right then and there. Right. You know, but I stayed true. You know, I'm, I'm really partial to a lot of the eclectic kids here at the school, your ROTC, right. your band, your kids, because they they can be themselves without worrying about what others have right. to say. And I try. And that's to, a plus. Yes. That is definitely a plus yes. in today's society. I try to send that message all the time. Be yourself. It doesn't matter. You know, I, that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. So if I were to let those kids, uh, let those students at that particular time, you know, make fun of me and just discourage me from doing what I wanted to, right. you know, to ultimately do, I probably would have never have been, have made it you know, to this point. Yeah. And those same kids, you know, when it was all said and done, were the same kids <laughs> scratching my back in the class for answers. Right, right. And trying to get me to do this and trying to get me to do that. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I try to get that message to the kids as well, you know. Yeah, right. yeah I'm saying, you, you really have to define your character. Be, and, it, and it's crazy because in defining your character, the same people that will make fun of you will be the same people that will brace you the strongest in the end. Like once you stand by what it is you say you, you're true. going to be, that the heckling turns to respect. That's facts. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm yeah, that's say. well said right there. Because I, no I played the viola, yeah. and I, I don't, don't don't judge me. I played the viola. For those who don't know, the viola is slightly bigger than the violin, and I was very good in it. And I used to play the viola, and uh. I love still to this day. Well, it's I'm, one a, of my I'm, I'm a I'm a basketball player too, so I basically well, my instrument was me tapping my leg at the pep rally. That's basically. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I played basketball. I thought it was pretty good, but you know, it didn't work out for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, I want to stop and have a quick uh, moment of fun. Okay. Okay. This is what I every podcast that I've done, I like to have a, a fun moment, a human fact, a human fun moment, or shall I say, humanizing fun moment. Right now. Tell me what your playlist look like in your in your phone. I said, what you riding to? What you riding to? Like on your way to work today, what did you ride to? You wouldn't want to know that. I mean, I'm I'm really a jazz guy. I'm stuff. I ride into things that are clear your mind. Well, give me something. Give me something. I'm a huge jazz fan too, so you gotta let me know. I mean, I'm trying to see what you're gonna say. Any any type of jazz you can think of. I mean, this morning, and believe it or not, I rode into Maze. All right, you know, yeah, I know I love me some and maze. Yeah, yeah, I mean, everybody yeah, love maze. Yeah. I'm saying, yeah, but I mean, you know, Najee, you know, Boney right. James, uh, Boney James, Cobason, yes, okay. you know those yes. guys, Kenny. I like G, Boney James. Yeah. Boney James you know, is dope. Boney I'm a huge, like, I'm a huge Sonny Rollins Wayne fan. Like, I'm Tinsdale. old school Tinsdale's jazz. Great. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm well. Sonny Rollins. I oh, yeah. love um, Monk. I mean, every well, I'm a huge Coltrane fan too. Like, I think Coltrane really is Coltrane. Just music, guys. like the real arrangements no, of but the those, music, just the, yeah. the different instrument pieces that you can hear, and I mean that's something that is missing the lost art in this. this yeah, music today. well, that's why, like I say, even with my baby boy, he since he was born, he does jazz at uh, at bath time mm -hmm. every night. Like I, like I, I, I really want to introduce that it your, into it his life. It actually causes your mind to open up in different dimensions. It does. I think and, and, and relax on different levels. You know? and let Same me tell you, every day at work, I'm on spa music. I got people that they will come into my office just to sit down and relax and kind of it relax is. and they're like oh my god I mean I right that's round the clock if we walk in right now it's right spa music. he and I talk about this because we we're big on meditating mm -hmm. yeah uh, so I, I'm a big when I get up in the morning I have to kind of get my mind together so you put that little clip on and Take some deep breaths to get your yeah. get your mind right. Because it, it's it's crazy when you try to explain things to people and they look at you crazy, but then you give them like real world. Because if you say vibes and frequencies to some people, you'd be like, oh, what then you get mean? the green head. Yeah. Yeah. But just like you said, <laughs> if you walk into a room and that music's playing, you feel like calm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Right. You know what I'm saying? The frequencies right. of music is th that's what it is, right. and that's what gives you that emotion. So. Yep. So. Thank you for obliging us. I mean, well, you know, what my little, what's oh, on no. your playlist right I mean, right it's now. nothing too exciting. And look, that's on a day-to-day -day basis. That's <laughs> every day. Because, I mean, you got to think about it like this. You got almost 1,500 kids, different personalities, home life, different situations. Ooh, yes. You, you know, so many working parts. About 200, 225 faculty and staff from teachers to custodians yes. to lunch monitors to cafeteria that's to, a big responsibility you gotta you know what i'm saying i mean and, 
and you have to be, it's all about customer service. Right. Yeah. You know, every day, that's one thing I pride myself on. And these kids will tell you this, anybody who works here, I'm the same every day. Right. You'll never know. Every single day, I'm exactly the same. Right. And that's that's Doesn't very important. what now. I have going on at home, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, with the family, I am the exact same every day and i get that consensus from uh the few kids that some yeah. has graduated this mm -hmm. year uh and even the ones that are graduating next year that's what they get mm -hmm. i mean that's what they when they talk about mr lumar they say well mr lumar hey i like him i mean even though he's kind of tough but i i, I love mr lumar so, they, they i mean you know they have words that they use you'd be like what does yeah. that mean exactly but that's, that's the consensus <laughs> that they give like you like that's that basketball reference right there i mean you gotta gotta leave the last play you know everything's about the next it. play you know yeah, yeah right, i just girl. try to be fan firm that's it yeah right yeah. that's what i get from everyone um, what you got me i would say that's respectability i'm um well you got me you well since you're in your in your in your zone of, of those things and you're gonna make me ask this question here <laughs> and maybe i can i can i can get some um some reference from this because sometimes i feel like i'm in this boat too with your schedule and with your time and everything that you're responsible for, like you just outlined, what do you think the biggest challenge to dating is? The biggest challenge? To dating. dating. To date. Yeah, what, you, um, what has been your biggest challenge to date? Like, to date. Well, just... Being from, a principal. Well, just, uh, you know, w once again, j just from the... the um, I guess from a current standpoint just the instructional piece it's it's ever so changing you know um you know with the state and we come in with this guided you know this guaranteed curriculum this changes every day from an educational standpoint that you have to stay current with and you have to ensure student success you know it seems like the students are testing every single day you know, that right. can become yeah. overwhelming. You gotta make sure you keep the kids motivated, you keep the teachers motivated. You wanna make sure that, you know, everyone is on the same page. And I just think, you know, I'm a, I'm always excited, I'm always upbeat, I'm always enthused, mm -hmm. I'm always motivating, and, and just trying to make sure the faculty and staff is on the same page because it starts at the top. Correct. You know, and, it's, and it's a direct Future reflection, down. you know, on you. So every day I'm I'm amped up, you know, hoping I can breathe that same type of enthusiasm into the teachers so it can trickle down to the students because it can become really overwhelming to them on a day-to-day -day basis just from an instructional standpoint, man. And, you know, you couple that with social media and <laughs> right. dealing with issues outside of the classroom, yeah. you know, mental issues and just different things like that, that can become extremely mm -hmm. challenging. And then, you know, trying to have those particular students perform well in the classroom at the same time, you know, it's crazy, you know, mm -hmm. today's generation with, with what they have going on, you know. So where do you recharge since you're, you're the head you have so much on your shoulders you're responsible for so many people so many lives where do you recharge where do you get I'm your i'm gonna tell you it's it's easy for me you know mm -hmm. because every day you know I, I make this comment it's verbatim it sounds like a broken record and people probably like all right here we go again <laughs> but i only say it because I, I mean it every day every day i come to work i look forward to coming to work can't wait to leave so i can get back to see these kids again and it's tough right now because they're not here they're not right so right now you're dealing with us the right. adults you uh -huh. know and uh but that's why i do it so they recharge I me mean, when you walk in and you see one lone face or mm -hmm. you see one excited face or you see one face screaming for help right and, you know that's what recharge me on a day-to-day -day basis like i say you to do this, you have to love the kids. Otherwise, you wouldn't survive an hour. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Because it's almost like a, you know, and I always reference a, a coaching. I don't know who would want to be a coach, you know, because mm -hmm. when you lose, when you win games, you got a lot of talent. And when you lose, it's your fault. Absolutely. So it's a no, <laughs> right. it's a no win situation. Right. It's right. the same, you know, I think being in any type of leadership position, you know, uh, the kid could, you know, we could have students that come here and decide they're not going to do anything. They're not going to follow any rules, no matter how many interventions we put in place. We can call home. We can do whatever it takes to make sure they're successful. 
and they could not do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's all going to fall back on me. Oh, yeah. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or Hornville High School or our teachers or. Because as know, a parent, just know this. I, I blame administration. No. There's no doubt. There's no <laughs> doubt. I yes, haven't had yes. any reason to blame administration, I'm going to be honest, uh, in, in some time. And I think uh, you all do an awesome job. I don't think that uh, the principal, teachers, even the custodians, I mean, my, I mean, I, top, I've, to I, I, top to bottom, you all do a pretty awesome job. And I'm not just saying that because I'm right. interviewing with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I'm saying that because I've been one to ring the bell if something's not, you know, Absolutely. to my liking. So when something is going well, I don't hesitate to say, uh, good job. Of course. Good job. Well, that's the, I, I think that's kind of the most important thing I always say about what we do is that I think when things are bad, we always have something to say. But right. when things are good, that's right. we're just mute. Right. Like, we don't say nothing. Like, right. we're not, we're not we applauding. Need, we yeah, we're not going to applaud. We, we just going to. much better with that. All right. Well, I ain't going to say nothing. Right. I ain't got nothing to complain right. about. No, we got to right. celebrate these things. Correct. You know? Correct. Absolutely. I think excellence is something that that is just as um, viral as negativity is if we, you know, if we would approach it the same way. You know, it's the reason why we can't get, you know, uh, positivity uh, across as easily as we can get a fight video. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Right. You know, I want to stop. Yeah. And we certainly have to rewrite the narrative. I'm just we, we do. You. And, we do. I, and I think, like you said, social media plays a lot into how our children respond, how they react, how they mm -hmm. behave. Mm -hmm. So uh, those who know better, adults, those uh, leaders, community leaders, we need to begin to continue to, to feed just as much positivity out there as we get this, mm -hmm. this negativity and these, you yeah. know. I, wayward ways. I, I see for me, my fight is always that I, I fight concepts of our thought process because we actually mirror what it is. Like we talk, we had the we had I had a conversation with a kid about rap mm -hmm. music, and he was saying the music reflects what we go through. Mm -hmm. I say no, the music mirrors what it is because if we constantly put that content in us, we're gonna reflect that. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So it it yeah. continues to be the narrative because it's it's what you continue to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. If we had the correct. same thing, it's like if our music and uh entertainment was more cosby show than it was you know trap music and love that's and right. hip-hop correct we would mirror that that's right because we would want to be that mm -hmm. right but we don't want to be that because we want to be two chains we don't want to be malcolm right. x and that's one of the biggest things that we have um a challenge for, for us because we're so in our community and we start in our house first mm -hmm. you know because we have teenagers that mm -hmm. they are they test the boundaries um which is kind of why we talked about the the teen summit being such a big thing to kind of mm -hmm. get yeah. back to because we are we're hard pressed on rewriting the narrative yeah. to make sure that uh, i'm a computer programmer by trade been doing it for 20 some years and one of the big sayings then uh, was garbage in equals garbage out mm -hmm. so you put garbage yeah. into a system you're gonna get a garbage system mm -hmm. out same thing with our kids we have to kind of feed them and continue to put great things in so we can get great things which goes yeah. off of their their energy the music the company the influencing you know we and i think that's back. the biggest part of of even the great movement and, the, and, and something that i thought of first when you came to me with the idea is that mm -hmm. we have to get back to making sure our kids understand that being employed is more important than um i guess being um heartbroken that like you say you didn't make it next level playing basketball right. and just being like i'm still a man if i provide for my family right. right i'm still a man if i'm respectable in my community right but we go from having that ideal that if we don't reach the mountaintop mm -hmm. we might as well right. just lay down here on the floor right and and not worry about nothing else like life is over and that's not it right and Absolutely. that's not even life and that's not life because if you aim for the moon like they say it the saying goes if you aim for the moon, moon and you don't hit it at least you land among the stars that's right. we have to have a plan and if that plan doesn't work out you're going to still be amongst greatness you know yeah so that's what it's about so Absolutely. what's your next question b um, I am I am here with oh well good. Uh, as the principal, even as an educator, what do you think the most important thing parents can do at home to help educators in you know um, I guess making it better, making it easier for these yeah. kids to learn and grow in the community? I just think the su just the support, you know, uh, just support your children. Um, it's very easy for me to deal with parents. I know people are probably losing their mind when I say that, but it is, because mm -hmm. because I'm a parent, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I have a 13 year old, but I always put myself in their shoes. So if you would come to school to crush the administration or 
belittle the faculty and staff. I, I always think like a parent. And if you don't advocate for your child, then no one else will. Right. Um, I also, you know, I communicate with people. So if you shoot me an email as a parent, I'm calling you back. Because I don't want to have to... I need which to, he does, which yes, he does. I need to gauge the, your temperature. I don't mm. want to just judge you on off of an email, yes. which could be a total a misconception. You Correct. Know? And that happens Correct. all the time. So I'll call you back. I, I'll gauge your temperature. And uh, I don't have those issues with parents, but I think the support... Yeah, the support system is critical for these kids, you know, because I know how they feel when just a teacher show up. So I can only imagine how they would feel if their own parents would provide that type of support. Just yeah. being there with them from a support standpoint, you know, um, we'll handle it from an academic standpoint. But if you just could establish that, that solid foundation at home in which we all can become a proud and productive team, I think that makes life easy, it, especially first and foremost for the child, for the student. All right. You know, so I, I think supporting your kids, you know, in whatever, you know, they, whether they're picking up an instrument, playing in a band or, you know, in a game club or receiving some type of award, just being visible and just providing that support for them, that foundation. Mm -hmm. It makes it it starts at home. I know a it lot does. of people it don't want to realize that, but it but it starts at home. And, you know, when you get calls where they're blaming you mm -hmm. and you know there's no blame on the kids the parents don't take any responsibilities i'm like well what, what? right i mean what's really what's yeah. really right. going on yeah. and, right. it, and yeah. it becomes a problem right you know and do you know what those he's like okay well, I, I see where the issue starts and i think one of the biggest things that we're aiming to do with rewriting the narrative is which is the purpose of this podcast mm -hmm. is reaching those who may be parents those mm -hmm who may be thinking about becoming parents because it's everyone, we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. There's no. not a handbook to this. No, and, that, and I think that's something that we we have to admit. Like I'm one of those people that's readily admitting that I'm flawed. I, and I, I mean, and I, and I tell my kids this all the time, do not ever expect me to be perfect. I think mm -hmm. parents want to be like super superheroes to their kids, but right. no, you need to be human to that's your correct. kids. Right. That's because correct. kids don't talk to their parents mainly because they don't see them as having the same problems that they've had. When no, life is basically the same for everybody. A absolutely. Yes. And the more human you make yourself, the more, I think, readily That's available true. you make your kids that, be that, able to that, come back and talk to you. That is so, so true. I mean, I, I have the 21-year-old, the 18-year-old, the and the 15-year-old, and I tell you, the, the more uh, I made myself human and showed my scars, if mm -hmm. you will, the more vulnerable that they became and open and honest, mm -hmm. which caused things to be quite, you know, easier in the right, household. Right, right, absolutely. You know. It does, it does. So, well, this is a, I think you had the, you had oh, the, yeah. a great well, question yeah, yeah. about this. The, is, this, is, this is my <laughs> thing too. I know um, more, more black men are needed in education. That's mm -hmm. a great one. Um, yeah. So, what do you have to say about young men that are interested in education um, what advice would you give them or how would you try to bring more young black men into education? And, you know, I, I talk to the students here all the time in regards to this. You know, I, I just try to give them a realistic picture on what it's like in today's society, what it's like when you get out there in the real world, you know, because I, I, I want them to look at me as an individual who struggled at mm -hmm. some point because I did. You know, and um, I want them to understand that there's nothing wrong with putting a subject and verb together to make sense. Right. There's nothing wrong with wearing <laughs> your pants on your waist. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, for some time I, when I, I was talking to a lot of these kids, a, a lot of our, our black students, they would come in and we would have honest conversations. They'll tell you that. You know, I'm honest with them. And they're like, well, I mean, you, you, you trying to be white. Mm -hmm. And so we okay, we can go there. So if and and then my response has always been, well, okay, I'm gonna put a subject and verb together. I'll try <laughs> to make sense. I'll right. wear my pants on my waist. You know, I'll do the things that I like to do, not with someone else. I say, well, I think it's doing what's right, mm -hmm. not what's white. But Correct. if you think that's what white is, then I'll take it because it's yeah. it's it's doing Good. what's right. And I try to get that in their head. You know that misconception that they have when you do the things that are 
the typical acting like a normal human being, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, mm-hmm. that we would do. There's nothing wrong with that. Correct. There's yeah. nothing wrong with Correct. wanting to be in an honest class. There's nothing wrong with following a group of kids that are doing the right thing. That has nothing to do with, with black or white correct and so my first to answer your question i have to separate that form so that they can visualize you know what they actually need to be looking at what they talking about goals talking about aspiration what is right you know Mm -hmm. uh because a lot of these kids you know we they want to fit the stereotype that we sometimes get placed on us that's right and that's where the young black men trying to educate them. I have guys come in every day in the morning. I tell them, log in on my computer. And they thought I was crazy. But every day you pull something up, somebody's getting murdered. Somebody's dying. And it's always us. Yeah. It's always. And right. they thought I was just saying that. So I told them, I just, I said, look, I haven't even looked at it. You yeah. go ahead and log in. Mm-hmm. And that's what you will see. You know, and it's going to take people, I tell them like you, people like myself, you know, to continue to go into educate education so that we can educate the young kids in today's society because it's progressively getting worse. Yeah. You know, and I want them to challenge themselves. I want them more, you know, you were talking about the stars and the moon. I, you know, I want them to aim. I'd rather them aim high and miss it. Correct. You know then set the bar so low That's so correct. that they can reach it. Right. You know, and we talk about those things all the time, but you, you know, you have to be your own individual and want to challenge yourself and want to do these type of things. Cause I watch kids walk around all the time and they're extremely smart, smart, they are exceptional, but they're not going to do it because that's not what the majority is right. doing. And they're going to be looked upon as selling out or, so we got to get over that stereotype and that stigma that's placed on you and develop these kids as leaders, Correct. you know, and, and make them step out of their comfort zone. I always tell them, go do something that you normally wouldn't do. Go mm-hmm. sit with somebody that's else. Correct. You yeah. know, that's another reason I chose Loyola. You know, my sister, is, she's a doctor right now, and she went to Xavier, and she she turned down a full scholarship to go to LSU because it was predominantly white, the medical school, so she can go pay to go to Meharry, which is a, a pretty much a, mm-hmm. an all black mm-hmm. a medical institution. And that's where we were different. I did the exact opposite. I chose Loyola also because it was geographically diverse. It was multicultural. So I can pick something up from you. Mm -hmm. And I can pick something up from the Vietnamese and then the Mm -hmm. white and then the Spanish. And then I could learn from all of the cultures until this day she has a difficult time dealing with people diversity the diversity because she never had that you know what i'm saying she chose to go in that direction which was no problem at all right you know some it's different strokes for everybody for different folks and i think we oftentimes have a problem with getting outside of our comfort zone yes because uh, you know uh, systemically we've been taught to think a certain way um say systemically what he said uh, when we talk about it starting at home we allow our kids to take in content that they're not ready for too early. Right. Then that's where that's where the mindset starts. When you right. got when you got the, the four and five year old girls, when you see the videos and they shaking oh, it yeah. like oh, they grown yeah. mamas at the club. Right. The content that they're able to take in is going to determine what they think is black. Mm-hmm. So this is black. Mm-hmm. Everything Cause hood this is look, black because this person looks like me and they're doing a certain thing right. and they're right. limiting that that that. That I get it. That's right. That's why you don't I, you don't have. Uh, I take it a step further. Though. I want to take it a step further. One of the things in my household that we do is I I like them to dare to dream, and and I know that's so cliche. I'm gonna just tell you, it's important for them to have a vision. Now, one of my kids, she wanted to be <laughs> at one time. She was young enough. She said, "I want to be a doctor and I want to be a beautician." At the same time, I said, mm-hmm. "Okay," <laughs> but she was like seven years old saying this. I, we have to make sure that we continue to water and, 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 and cultivate their dreaming. Allow them to dream. Allow them to, ha- to, to have a vision for themselves. It's, it's mandatory in our household that you, every year, we got a vision board. But, that, but that's a great, that's a great you know, thing. Every year. Right. And, you, and you started it, and that gave yeah, them a head that's start. That's right. Started right. at home. You know? it's just, that's right. And it's important. But a lot of our kids... That's why our our kids are being lost. And I'm talking about 
any color, any spectrum, but let's even come to our community. They're lost because they lack vision. No, they, they, if you don't know your purpose. But you got to give it to them, though. Just like true, say, true. how many? There are so many 30 pluses that if you sat down with them and you asked them, what do you want from your life? No doubt. Yeah. What like what makes you happy? Now you yeah. telling me a thirty seven year old person has no clue what makes them happy. No clue where they aspire to go. Yeah. How can they raise a child to think yeah. the same way? Absolutely. That's right. Just FYI, what makes me happy is the beach. Yeah. You know, it can <laughs> be in Dominican Republic. It can be uh in uh, Cabo. Just yeah. But I mean, <laughs> but people think and, and, and people will laugh, but that's right. it, because then you start finding a meet. Like once you find your destination, you start to fill in the gaps because that's now correct. it's like, you know what? How do I get to this beach? How do I right. stay that's here right. longer? You know that's what I'm saying? That's correct. That's correct. And you make things happen from there. That they, one week goes to right. two weeks. And yeah. a month. <laughs> when he started talking about how he got from his public high school to Shaw to college and how things start to fall in place. And I tell people that if you get started on your journey, the universe will start to put things in place for you. That's correct. So right. you had one stone, then you picked up two stones, and then you got to college, and you got That's to correct. put everything in your bucket. Right. And yeah. then start deciding what you wanted to do. Right. And, right. and let me tell you something. When, when, I mean, when I first was named principal, everybody, man, <laughs> they got a black guy. <laughs> this the first ever. And right. I never even thought about that. Like, that never once cross my mind until a million people start calling me and telling me the exact same thing. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, yeah. has it really been this bad? You know, yeah. has it really been this long? And then I reflected and then, you know, I had a greater appreciation of what just happened. And That's you're talking good. about the pressure. It wasn't so much the pressure, but I say, man, I, I have to live up to this expectation because I know they have a lot of people looking at me, looking at me to be successful. Some looking at me to fail, mm -hmm. you know, and I understand that. But I know I needed to, to, to do what I needed to do because it could afford someone else the opportunity to be able to do this. And what makes it even better is that I started off as a teacher and then I was a coach mm -hmm. and then I became an administrative monitor and then I went to the next step which was mm -hmm. the assistant principal and then I became so it was the, the entire metamorphosis progression you know the progression to get to where I am today that was no you know I didn't cut any corners no missteps mm -hmm. you know I did what I needed to do to get to this point. So every time I sit down and I do something, I try to make sure I do it 10 times better than Correct. the average man, yeah. just so right. I can yeah. you know, show these kids, not just the black kids, all of the kids, you know, and uh, I knew they all, they're watching, even when, you know, I don't really know they're watching. They're watching That's me. That's correct. I they are. Them. They I are. Oh, they are. I can are. feel them. Everything right. that you're doing, and it really changed my life from a from a personal standpoint. You know how I live my life, mm -hmm. the things I do, the way I conduct myself at all times. I'm careful. It made it made me a better person. And it holds you accountable. You know? that, oh, it that holds accountability? You, yeah. It holds you. That's it right. holds you accountable. That's, that's right. you know that's well said. So. But it, it was crazy, man, and when people start saying that and then I, I start doing the research and, you know, I was like, man, I didn't realize this school had been open as long. And I'm like, yeah. that is something that yeah. 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 entire yeah. community, you know, to be the first black. But that's not going to make you do a good job. Yeah. That's, gonna, right. that's yeah. not going to make you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, something uh, that I don't want to be missed. In what he said, I, I mean, the thing that jumps out at me most is the fact that you went through everything. You mm -hmm. started at being a teacher and you just progressed all the way up. I think the, the, the huge misconception with kids is that things just happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfect. Like, no, that's perfect no, that things don't right. just happen. No. That's right. Like, I mean, you really have to put the work in. And I think I spend a lot of times talking to kids about just not being discouraged because you're going to have missteps. Nothing is going to be perfect. Even in your own life, you're going to have things happen and you have to talk yourself out of, Correct. you know, wanting to completely right. fall back from something Correct. just because you didn't have, you know, you didn't reach the mountaintop your first try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it doesn't right. work like that. Right. And, yeah. and, and, and nothing is instant. No, no. Nothing is no. instant. And just like you said, I'm pretty sure you had some, some hills to climb. 
and I'm yeah. pretty sure that you had some difficult moments. But yeah, just, you. I mean, you put it times as, as a teacher, be like, I'm Absolutely. not sure I want to do this. Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, then you know, <laughs> fast forward a few years later, and then you yeah. you know you recaptured your love for it in a different way. Correct. And I just tell people that all the time. Just don't give up. Exactly. Right. Just don't give That's up. Right. I remember being nope. in high school and I went to boys state, boy, boys and girls state, mm-hmm. and me and another guy that wasn't. I mean, not even necessarily sure how that cat got there, but, <laughs> right. but he got put in a dim- different atmosphere, and he was a completely different person. Mm. Completely different person. I, Isn't like, that something else? That's it, it, it is. And I, I spent last summer trying to convince kids from Kelowna to go to sheriff's camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I got backlash and nobody wanted to do All it, right. but I keep telling parents, you will be surprised what your kids that's will right, acclimate yeah. to. That's right. That's right. And take to if you will allow them to. That's right. I mean, I I, I really think it's here's the one of the things that really got got us through. We were always if there was a, a camp abroad, our parents put us on that. <laughs> y'all going to this camp yeah. when it was putting us on a bus like okay, we're going to uh, African American Museum and we used to bus going to Alabama yeah. and mm-hmm. spend a week and come back. I mean, just the atmosphere. I went to several basketball camps from Louisiana. Uh, LA Tech, I mean, Louisiana mm-hmm. Tech uh, University. And of course, we did several different, and, and that's what I, our family was big on that. We, we're military brats, right. so they yeah, always what, had us. Yeah, what had us that. So I'm gonna, I got a concept. So I wanna get an opinion from the principal of, of that. So we stay on talking about diversity mm-hmm. and, and having different experiences. I am one of those people that, that think that the same things that we complain about are the same things that we need to be involved in. If you don't like the police force, we need more black police officers. If you don't like the justice system, we need more black judges. We need more black lawyers. You cannot complain about the systems and then not want to be a part of them. You have to be a part of them in order to have some kind of control or opinion over them. So right. what do you think about that? Because I get a lot of, now, like, nobody wants to be a police officer. Nobody wants to be a I lawyer. Agree, but you man. Wanna... I agree, man. I mean, I, we talk about that all the time, especially going back, you know, to education, just with this new Jumpstart curriculum and, you know, certifications. And then kids now going to be work ready as soon as they graduate, you know, from high school. We got guys that, you know, are into welding here that leaves here and, they become certified welders. Uh, mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, just hired a, a former student that's going to return this year as a as a welding instructor. Mm-hmm. So you need, you know, I barely know how to put gas in a car. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. a lot of times people say you pay for what you don't know. You know, yeah. you need the mechanics, you need the policemen, right. you need all those people. And um, I'm a big advocate for for the military. Mm-hmm. So I make the school. I mean, it's a very inviting you know, atmosphere for them when they come into the school system because I think it gives the kids some type of direction in life as opposed to just, look, four years, you got to go to college, four years, then you go do this, then you go do Mm -hmm. that. You know, Mm -hmm. if that's the case, we wouldn't have these, you know, we wouldn't have these people to protect and to serve and, Mm -hmm. you know, like you say, you need more judges, you need need more principals, you know, to have some type of influence on a on the school and in the system to have a voice and um you know to just to do the right thing you know not not so much you know I, and, I, and this is what i tell the black kids all the time look we want to make this decision because it's the right decision for kids not because it's just the right decision for you Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, as a black kid, but for yeah. all kids, right. because we want people to reciprocate that, mm-hmm. That's right. you know, and we want to be treated fair like that yeah. as well. So you try to get them to have a, a open mind because a lot of them get into things just because it's pro black. Right. And sometimes it's awful things to get into. Correct. But because it's sort of, you know, the black thing to do at that particular mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. they do it. And they don't even know why, right? You know, right. so that's that's the one thing. You, you know, we just want to make decisions that's best for kids, for all kids, for you know the young generation, and to preach the message on what you're talking about in regards to we need. If, if you want to make a difference, if you want to have some type of influence, then that's the path you need to take. And that's to, why you know, I, that's why I that's so true. Preach mentorship. You know? I think mm-hmm. mentorship is the way to reach i mean like education is the thing because these kids are going to be in 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 school more than they're going to be anywhere else but mentorship 
mentorships allows that black lawyer to speak to a kid that doesn't see him the way that he probably should. It brings he the human side right. of he it. Does, he it doesn't see his one parent household where his mother raised him or his grandmother raised him right. and he's a lawyer. Mm-hmm. That black kid that sees him just sees a guy in a suit. He's no better than the judge to him. Mm-hmm. Not knowing that his background, and he might have had a worse background than him. Right. right. He may have less to complain about than right. that guy that's a lawyer. Right. Through mentorship and those conversations, having that conversation and sharing your story. Like sharing your story is so important. Correct. Because like our kids have so many misconceptions about life mm-hmm. and the people that they see every day. Right. And it's a shame that you say you can see a kid um, maybe 150 times in a year and never have a conversation with them. That's good that you said. Never have right. any insight to who right. that person is as a person. And, and that's great. And we, we got to right. change that. We, we definitely have to change that. You got to have the um, conversations. And, and, and in closing, if you are now, you have your first year in the books. That is. Of, of Congratulations. the principal Thank of the you. best school ever, Hornville High School. Absolutely. Um, how do you feel? It's, it's, I, know, I know it's pretty new. It's, right. it's just summer's not, what's the summer is on the 21st? Well, I mean, it started. Right They're out of school, yeah. so it, it started. So I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel? Well, I'm a, it never ends, you know, because right. you're trying to close out the year now, and then I, I, I tell my friends all the time, the school year don't just magically begin. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's what the summertime is for, just preparing yourself for the upcoming school year, whether it's from changes with the faculty and staff, whether it's new, you know, rules, Mm -hmm. whether it's new procedures in place, uh, maybe from an instructional standpoint, the curriculum is different. There's professional development and, you know, you have to get ready for the upcoming school year. So you you really don't have much time to sit back and reflect. But I'll tell you, you know, we always throw this out here about Hornville. St. Charles Parish, it really is a phenomenal school district. It is. You know, I wish is. I've had the opportunity growing up to come to a system mm-hmm. like this. I mean, you walk around this campus, it's like a junior college. Right. And these kids are so spoiled because they think every child is walking around with and facilities that's not the, yeah. like yeah. this. And it's not the case. It's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> to bring you home from practices. Right. But they, we really do pride ourselves on being a triple A AAA school mm-hmm. district, uh, representing academics, athletics, and the arts. And I think you know those three are second to none. Good. You know, and I think we you know we say all the time how good of a school system, how good of a school we have, but it, it really is exceptional. It really is. It, it really, really is, is uh, top to bottom. They have some great people. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a great superintendent mm-hmm. along with uh, executive staff as well as a phenomenal school board. You know, uh, that certainly advocates for 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 our teachers and and they're the most important piece in this you know uh you know the teachers because they're in the trenches yes they day, are well, you know great teachers and i want to support them uh at all times mm-hmm. you know and i try to do that on a day-to-day basis and i pride myself on supporting our teachers but but at the end of the day it comes down to the students mm-hmm. and just my vision is always just doing what's best for kids that is, and that's that pretty much that's, summed it up for it. I mean, that summed yeah. it up. That was a, this is a great podcast. Absolutely. And then, in, in closing, I'm just gonna say I'm sorry that you just um, didn't get the opportunity to share this awesomeness. Hey, but awesome. I mean, it's, it's all <laughs> better late than I never, mean, right? I, I learned something. You're today. following the building. I was very, yeah, very impressed with, <laughs> with with how it um you know how it turned out. And I got family that came from here, so I guess that's I got a little more respect for them than I did before. Well, you can always one. drive up airline. Yeah, okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. You better say that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Lumar. Absolutely. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having definitely. me. Definitely, this has definitely. been Very Great well Table done. Talk, and we out. All right. Thank you so much. Well, Good deal. Stuff. That's awesome.